Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can integrate a map view control with your Swift application. Now, one of the things that you will notice is that there is no map view control. You can't really use a map view because it doesn't really exist in Surf UI. But the good news is that you can always get the controls that are in UI kit, which is MK map view, and you can expose it and use it in Surf UI applications. So let's go ahead and see that how we can do that. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new folder and I will call it views where I will put all my views. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and add a new file and I would call it a map view. Make sure that you select Surf UI view because we are adding a Surf UI view and let's go ahead and add a map view. So map view, perfect. Now inside the map view, what we are going to do is we are going to be using the MK map view. Now MK map view is the actual map view that is available in UI kit, but you can import it and you can represent it in Surf UI. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and import the map kit. The map kit actually contains all the different things associated with maps. And now I can go ahead and create my structure for map view. And it is going to be using the UI view representable. All right. This basically means that this particular map view will represent a different kind of a control which will be available or which will be coming from a UI kit. Now there are a couple of required functions that you need to implement. One of those function is called the make UI view. So let's go ahead and implement that, make UI view. The make UI view is going to get access to the context. You can simply pass in the actual context over here and the returning type, that what type we will be returning. I can go over here and say MK map view because I will be returning the MK map view. By the way, this MK map view is part of the UI kit. So if you are ever building a UI kit application, then you can use the or return the MK map view, which is basically used to display maps. And from inside this make UI view function, you can actually go ahead and create that map view. So map is equals to MK map view. So we're creating a MK map view and map dot show user location. You can call it or you can say true, that's fine, so that it shows the user location. The map view control does have a lot of delegate function which allows you to zoom, which allows you to handle um, many different kind of operations like the selecting annotation, adding annotations and entering region, exiting region and so on kind of things. Uh, we're going to say map dot delegate equals to and we are going to assign the delegate to context dot coordinator, which right now we have not built the coordinator, but we will eventually build the coordinator. Great. And finally, we're going to return the map. So let's go ahead and implement the make coordinator function. So make coordinator function. The job of the coordinator is to coordinate different kind of delegate events. So in this case, our delegate events will be responsible for uh, zooming into the map our delegate function can also handle adding annotations and these kind of things. So let's see that how we can implement that. Currently, we don't really have a coordinator, but eventually I will build the coordinator. So I'm just going to return the coordinator over here and I will create a coordinator, which by the way, I don't have. So I'm just going to say coordinator self. Okay. So this is obviously not going to compile right now. The other function that I have to have is called the update UI view, update UI view. And right now we're not really providing any update. So I'm just going to leave it blank. This is basically if you have done something on the Swift UI and you want to update the view, which in our case can be updating annotations, adding annotations, removing annotations and things like that. But we are not really doing anything over here right now. Let's go ahead and work on the coordinator. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new group and I will call it coordinators. And inside the coordinators, I'm going to add a new file. You can 
Call this coordinator anything you want. Uh, I'm just going to call it coordinator. Coordinator, that's fine. Now this coordinator will be responsible for coordinating the different kind of delegate functions, events from the MK map view delegate. So the first thing I need to do is I need to import map kit. And now I can go ahead and create a class, which will be a coordinator class, which will be inheriting from NS object. And also it will be using the MK map view delegate. This means that now the coordinator has access to all the different delegate functions that are available in MK map view delegate. If you command click and jump to definition, you should be able to see a lot of different kind of delegate functions that you can actually use. Region will change animated, region did change animated, map view will start loading map and so on. You can see a lot of different delegate functions. So you can handle any one that you want. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a control and that will be the map view control. There we go. And in order for you to create this coordinator, you have to fire or you have to pass in the map view control. So control equals to control. So now we have a map view control. After that, it's completely up to you, whatever delegate functions that you want to implement. Uh, right now, we don't really want to implement anything, but eventually you'll see that I will have to implement the did add views delegate function and which will allow us to zoom into the map. But right now, I don't want anything to be implemented. Let's go back to the map view and let's close this out. Let's go ahead and build our application again and see if these error goes away now. Okay, so that goes away, that's great. Let's go jump into the content view and now we should be able to use our map view. So let's go ahead and check out our canvas. Right on the canvas will only display the text and hello world because that's what it is doing right now. But if we go ahead and start using our new view, the map view, then we should be able to see something. So map view. And there we go. We are able to see the map. Obviously it's not really visible. Let's go ahead and run the application again by pressing the play button. And once it is in the live mode, at least you should be able to see uh, the live map. There we go. Pretty cool, right? You can double click, you can zoom in, you can do a option key and kind of like pinch zoom out also, pinch zoom in. So everything on the map works as expected, but you don't really see your position, like where you are. So that is something that we still need to do. So the question is, how do we do that? When or how can we find out your position uh, by requesting your position and how can we indicate it on the map? which is your current position. In order to get the location of a person, of the user, we need to use the location manager so we can request the location. Right now, we don't have any code for location managers. So I'm gonna add a new group and I will call it managers. And over here in the managers, I can go ahead and add a new file, which will be representing the location manager. So let's go ahead and add it, location manager. Perfect. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a class. I'll call it location manager. It is going to be using NS object. Um, you can actually make your location manager observable object. This means that whenever you get a location, then your system or your you know UI can actually update. That is perfectly fine. Right now, I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to go ahead and create a location manager and it will be a CL location manager. You can actually see that it's not really available right now. So make sure that you import the map kit. So now you have location manager. For a particular location, we can go ahead and create a variable that can hold a location. And then finally, we will go ahead and create the initializer, which will be uh, responsible for setting up the delegate for the location manager, setting up the desired accuracy for the location manager, and also setting up the distance filter and the asking for a particular permissions. 
Finally, I'm going to go ahead and create an extension for the location manager. And this extension will use the location manager delegate. So it's going to conform to the location manager delegate. So now you can see this error is now gone. And now we have our, at least our location manager. Great. Now, once we initialize the location manager, all of this code is going to get fired. We are not going to get access to the location because, well, this is kind of useless. We didn't really use anything. If you do want to get access to the location, you can use the observable object and then you can publish this particular location. So maybe I can even show it to you that one. That's fine. And you can print out the location also. All right. But right now, our main mission, main task is to simply display our location. So let's go to our content view and go ahead and initialize a location manager. So I'm just going to say private var location manager equals to location manager. And as soon as I call the initializer, it's going to go ahead and try to initialize it, or it's going to go ahead and fire everything that I have in the initializer for the location manager, which is going to request for permission. But we are still missing a couple of different things in info.plist, which is actually required. And those couple of things are two tags, NS location when in use usage description. So let's go ahead and try to add that. There we go. And we can provide some sort of a string to indicate the value. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Now the next one that we have to provide is the NS location always usage in description. So let's go ahead and add that also. And for that description, we can actually go ahead and also add some sort of a description. With all of these settings in place, we should be able to access the location. Now one of the things I have at least I have noticed is that you have to run this on the simulator in order for this to work, at least for the first time. And the subsequent times it should be able to do okay. But for the first time when you're running it, you have to run it on the simulator so it can ask you for the permission. So let's see if we are running it on the simulator and uh, it should be able to ask us for the permission hopefully. And once we say yes, then it should show us our permission. There we go allow when using the app there we go and now it can show the location now since this is actually running it on a simulator it shows us the location which currently is in san jose so kind of like close to apple campus maybe uh, cupertino area uh, i'm all obviously not in cupertino so you can see that it is actually showing your location right Perfect. So in this particular video, you learned that how you can set up your map view, how you can set up your location manager, and how you can display your location in a map view. Now in the next videos, I'm going to show you that how you can find out your latitude and longitude and then display it on the screen. So stay tuned for that. If you want to learn more about Surf UI and how you can create application using Surf UI, then check out my Udemy course, which is Surf UI declarative interfaces for any apple device now this is a 13 plus hour course and i keep on updating the course with new stuff um, this course is going to teach you everything you need to know about sophia you can see this is the best-selling course on udemy not only that but it has close to like 2500 students already enrolled and it has 12 sections which goes through every single thing building list and navigation Understanding state and binding, very important section. Understanding MVVM design pattern, and then we build a complete coffee application using MVVM. So that's like advanced stuff. And then we jump into the Surf UI for all devices. I even show you integration with core data. Now, the best way to get this course is check out the YouTube description and click on the link in the description. If you click on the link and buy the course using the link, then I get to keep a little bit more higher revenue. And it will be really, really, I will be really thankful if you do that. I mean, if you purchase a course using the YouTube description links that I'm providing you. Uh, apart from that, thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And stay tuned for the next video in which we're going to learn more stuff about the map integration with Surf UI.